Facial feminization surgery. It can be quite the grueling process, but it can have literally life-saving effects. But just as with many other transition-related things, there are some myths and misunderstandings some people have about FFS that we should break apart. So there are many things that I could include in this list here, but I just decided to focus on four things that I often hear when it comes to facial feminization surgeries. The first is this idea that FFS is not or should not be considered to be medically necessary. And what I mean by that is being deemed medically necessary in order to be deemed worthy for health insurance coverage. FFS is designed to reduce gender dysphoria and also typically increases gender euphoria for trans women and trans feminine people. The improvement in mental health can be absolutely astounding. I mean, I know it was for me. And you could also probably say that getting facial feminization surgery might even help with safety and security because it often helps those of us that do get it pass at least a little or a lot more easily, thereby reducing the likelihood of discrimination, violence, rejection, just negative reactions from other people. But despite all this, the significant health benefits are often overlooked and insurance coverage is often denied, largely because it is seen as being purely cosmetic, and what I mean by that is not medically necessary. And shocker, anti-trans stigma is still very pervasive in medical and health insurance systems, which doesn't help matters. This does not mean that it's not possible to get facial feminization surgery covered by insurance. It has happened for some people. So definitely fight to try to get covered if you're pursuing FFS. Just know it'll likely be very much an uphill, if not impossible, battle depending on where you live, what insurance you have, and what surgeon you're planning on going with. This next one is a well-intended type of comment that I have heard a lot, and I know other people, other trans women have as well, that shows a grave misunderstanding, is probably a nice way to put it, about what FFS is and why trans women tend to get it. It's the comments about, you're so pretty, you don't need FFS. Sure, when people say these kinds of things, typically well-intentioned, and I can see that, but it also feels quite invalidating because, you know, the people in my life that have told me that, they don't see what I saw in the mirror prior to FFS. They don't see what I still see in the mirror after FFS. They have a very different perception of me that's pretty much blinded by the connection they may have with me, and they don't experience that dysphoria that I experience. If you do get comments like this at any point, remember to remind yourself that getting FFS is about what you want and need for yourself. It's not about what other people think you do or don't need. And as I've talked about in the past, it can be very hard to differentiate the two, but remember to focus on doing the things you need to do for you in your own needs, not what other people expect of you. Third myth here, you should always go with whatever your surgeon recommends. Obviously, you don't have to do everything your surgeon recommends in terms of FFS or anything else. I bring this one up because we can be pressured to just say yes to doctors and other people that have expertise or perceived expertise and power and authority, but we don't have to say yes to what they're suggesting. Although your surgeon is likely trained to notice more subtle features that can masculinize or feminize a face, you should ask yourself a few things before committing to all of their recommendations or even some of their recommendations. First and foremost, can you afford all of what they're recommending? Because FFS is not cheap, as many of you probably already know. But beyond that, do their recommendations feel genuine? Like they genuinely want to help you? Or does it feel like they're pressuring you and upselling you for things that you don't really need? Does it feel like they have a different beauty standard than you? And they likely do because plastic surgeon and plastic surgery beauty standards can be quite ridiculous and impossible to achieve, especially depending on the surgeon. And does how they see you match how you see yourself? Again, probably not. Don't be afraid to say no to what a doctor recommends or suggests. 
They may be the medical expert in this case, but always remember that you are the expert of your own body, your own needs, your own wants, and your own life. And our last myth for today's video, the idea that there is only one standard type of FFS, or that saying FFS means the same thing. Keep in mind that facial feminization surgery is basically just a category and that many different types of surgeries fall within this category. So when somebody's talking about FFS, it can mean many, many different things. FFS may involve a nose job, tracheal shave, a jawline contour reduction, lip lift, lip filler, cheek implants, raising the eyebrows, shaving of the brow ridge, advancing the hairline, and so much more. It may involve all of this, some of this, or completely other things that I can't even think of. Pretty much any plastic surgery procedure that is designed to feminize your face in some way could be considered FFS. And that is also why the cost in FFS can range greatly depending on what we're talking about. Remember that FFS is very customizable to your own needs though because of all these different things that could potentially go into facial feminization surgeries. But again, don't feel pressured to do more surgery than you feel you want or need. FFS can be life-saving for many trans women and trans feminine people, again in terms of reducing that dysphoria, increasing gender euphoria, and often increasing level of passing if that is something that's important to you. I know passing is a very complicated subject. It's unfortunately often very expensive and insurance coverage is often difficult, if not impossible, depending on your situation, your insurance provider, and the surgeon you may be considering. I personally think it should be covered because of all these things I mentioned, because of the huge role that our face and facial structure plays in determining how others and ourselves gender us and treat us, and therefore it influences our mental and physical well-being. But I would be curious to hear your thoughts on this and everything else I've shared. What are some of the myths and misunderstandings that you've heard about FFS? What do you think of the select few that I've discussed today? Do you think FFS should be covered by insurance more widely? Why or why not? Let me know all of this and so much more down in the comments below. And as always, Tipsy and I love you all and hope that you're staying safe and sound and healthy as possible. If you have not done so already, please be sure to give this a huge thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I love you all, and bye for now. Oh.